Well, uh, welcome everyone. Um, to, this is the first uh, Ignite Artist Spotlight session. And my name is Teresa Buller and I'm a coordinator uh, with uh, culture and social development in the community services department of the regional municipality of Wood Buffalo. So, and I'm very excited to be here this afternoon. But before we start proceedings, I would like to first acknowledge that we are located here on Treaty 8 territory. This is the traditional lands of the Cree, Dene, and Métis people. This is also the traditional meeting ground of many Indigenous people since time immemorial. As we continue to recognize our past, and together we are present, uh, we are here presently enjoying this, um, enjoying this virtual space. And, but also we should look forward to future relationships and respecting those with our First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people of Canada. It is of course our shared responsibility to respect these lands and to preserve and nourish these waters as well as the relationship with our environment and the relationship with each other. So with that, before I introduce uh, my brilliant artist here, um, I do have a couple of housekeeping tips that I'd like to review with all of you, just to make sure that we're having the most amount of fun we can possible. So number one, this event is being recorded as, as an act of transparency and as a form of record keeping. It will be say it will be made available to the public and um, once the meeting has concluded. So this way people who are able uh, are able to purchase um, the equipment or the light box from branded and complete it at another time. If you don't want your face to appear in the recording, we invite you to keep your video off. You'll notice that your audio device will be muted for the pre presentation portion of today's events. This is intentional and this is so that the guest speaker can share information without being interrupted. Once the formal portion is over, of course, our support team will enable your camera and microphone, and we encourage those who are comfortable to share their screen and ask questions. If you have questions throughout the duration of, the, of this afternoon, um, please enter, enter them at any time during in our chat feature. And we always prepare for these virtual events, of course, but we do ask for your patience in the event that we experience technical difficulties because <laughs> it does happen. <laughs> Welcome to um, 2020 and, and, and current situation. <laughs> so art is also a form of personal expression. And so we'd like to make this a safe space for everybody. And so please keep this in mind for a duration together and any disrespectful behavior will result in immediate removal from this workshop. Thank you very much. So without further ado, I'd like to invite uh, Brandon Tyson to the table. He is the mastermind behind M um, Mandela Magic, which is being featured at the Ignite exhibition. And so I will uh, invite him to share more about his practice and then uh, we'll move into, of course, the uh, workshop session. Take it away. <laughs> Thank you, Teresa. Nice to meet everybody. Um, yeah, my name is Brandon Tyson. I'm an Indigenous artist from uh, Calgary, Alberta. Um, I have been in my craft and trade now for about six to seven years in uh, different capacities for it. Um, myself, uh, one of my big keys for growing in, in my skills is constantly looking for um, just new art forms and, and ways of being able to express myself. Um, I have had, I'd say, many career changes as an artist throughout my lifetime, um, but every single time I find new ways of increasing complexity in what I do and finding ways of bringing each of those skills back and remarrying them into something new uh, that I wouldn't have been able to do before with just the single skills. Um, when I first started doing what I was doing now, I, um, I originally got into graphic design um, probably about 10 years ago as a performer, just as a way of being able to create my own um, uh, merchandise and marketing materials. Uh, and I did so by uh, teaching myself how to um, basically rebuild uh, crop circles inside of uh, Illustrator. Um, and this this lended to learning a lot of the uh, integral skills that I need that I use in my artwork today. Um, and for the longest time, that just ended up being files stored away in Dropbox, never to be seen again. Um, and it was actually a uh, low point for me when I uh, I got kicked out of my own business running a studio, uh, a dance studio, probably about seven years ago. Um, that ended up amicably, but uh, it kind of put me in the spot of what do I want to do with my life now? 
Um, and I took that as an opportunity to go down to our local maker space in Calgary known as Protospace, where I started discovering all kinds of new maker tools, laser cutters, CNC cutters, plasma cutters, 3D printers, all those kind of fun things. And all of a sudden, all that design work that's been stored away in files forever suddenly was able to be brought back to life again in something new, something tangible that I could create uh, around me. Um, so I got into just starting to create a couple of things. And as it works for most artists, somebody was like, I like that. I want it. Here's money. And then you go and make some more and somebody else wants to give you money for that. And the next thing you know, you've fallen into a black hole of your own art and you're stuck there. <laughs> uh, and here we are now. Um, so after kind of learning that craft a bit, I ended up starting um, uh, my first company in regards to this, which I called Luminetic Tech and quickly discovered that it's a terrible name for other people to repeat and understand. So I changed that uh, to Lightbox Project, which has now become my corporation that I use for all of my manufactured products, uh, which include everything from light boxes to wearable technology to wall art to um, just basically anything that you can make with a laser cutter and throw LEDs in it. Um, after doing that for um, a couple of years, I uh, came to a point where um, <clears throat> when you're running it as a corporation, you really have to create a distinction between your business and yourself, um, especially when you're looking long term, because a corporation shouldn't be something you're defining yourself with forever. It should be something that you're kind of keeping at arm's reach, but also knowing that like you need a place to express yourself as an artist. Um, and that's where I came to the point where I decided to start uh, Foxed Up Designs, which is a my design company, which basically handles all the IP and information around what I create. So it owns the product products that I create and then I provide them to my company Lightbox Project to produce and distribute them, uh, which makes it easier because as an artist in the future, I'm able to sell off an arm of what I'm doing while being able to maintain the uh, artistic integrity of my work and having a channel to be able to continue doing that through. And to me, I found it was really important because it gets tough to create a distinction between both your art and your work when both of them are kind of the same thing all the time and your art is what's paying for you. Um, I've actually gone through a number of skills where I've pushed too hard to make a business about it and it eventually kind of sucks the soul out of it and it just becomes too monotonous. We've all worked those jobs that we hate and trust me, art can do the exact same thing to us. So it's really important to basically be able to create those boundaries and lines between what do you want to do as work and what do you want to do as your passion of creating and, and expanding yourself? And for me, that's kind of where my Fox of Design comes in now because that becomes how uh, I find new ways to create and new ways of uh, new challenges to basically grow in what I'm doing. Uh, Ignite here is a perfect example as an installation. This is my first time ever doing a public art installation. I'm used to working with um, larger corporations to do custom work for them. And it's a whole other dynamic that you work within it because they're usually wanting something within your current skill sets that you have to kind of give to them, which is just kind of recreating the same things in different ways. Uh, whereas an opportunity like this, suddenly I'm able to create bigger and more expansive and to problem solve more. And that was a big thing for me is that um, I'm always about um, goal oriented design. So when I work with anybody, it's about what are your goals, uh, either as a client or as another artist, um, and how do we design based on those goals, whether that's budget or effect or uh, what exactly you want to be making into it, um, because it really helps to accomplish something that uh, appeals to everybody afterwards. Um, and it was a fun challenge to see what Ignite wanted to see as their goals in these in these creations and then being able to align a creation uh, to those goals while at the same time expanding my skill set in areas that I haven't gone into before, uh, which is great because it creates this level of um, when you're an artist and can do whatever you want, sometimes it's hard to motivate yourself to get it done. Uh, so having something with a deadline uh, and new goals on it is a great motivator to be able to just get the work done and be on top of it every single day. Um, and so I love opportunities like this because you're, you kind of force yourself to have to expand on your skill set, which is a really important thing to be able to do if you want to continue growing as an artist and not feel like you're stagnating in that position after a while. So that's a little bit of history on me. Um, and so today what we're going to be talking about is one of my products. It's the uh, light box. This is where basically the entire company started from was creating one of these. Uh, as uh, most of you should have kits and kind of see the parts that you've got there for it. We'll kind of go through them. Uh, talk a little bit about the parts and why I built things the way I did. Um, kind of what was the bigger picture behind doing it that way? Um, because uh, I am an artist, but before that I'm an entrepreneur first, a maker second, artist third. Uh, so I'm very cognizant of systems, manufacturing, design. Um, it's one thing to have an idea. Uh, it's another thing to be able to take that idea and turn it into something in the real world in a way that doesn't uh, over inundate you with work because uh, I've had tons of ideas that take forever to do and 
they're not as fun to do if you're constantly stuck having to do the process all the time versus actually enjoying the fruits of your labor. So it's really good to be conscious ahead of schedule on what you're doing, uh, how you want to create something and really planning that out forward so that when it comes to actually turning that into something, uh, it works effectively and efficiently and you're not bumping into too many uh, errors along the way, but that's how we grow anyway. So you kind of want to embrace those anyway. So um, let's get started here. So I've got, um, I'm going to just move my camera down here a bit so you guys can see the table a little bit more here in front of me where I'm working. Um, you guys can kind of see what all's going on here. So I, uh, you guys have a little bit of a different setup than I do, but uh, all the parts are pretty much the same. You'll have uh, four panels that it comes with. Uh, so these are the, uh, the artwork panels that we use on all these boxes. And so what I've um, um, done with the business is uh, because this art can be so varied, uh, we generally have a uh, kind of build your own light box model where people can choose any artwork they want. So you get something that's unique, one of a kind and uh, built for you or for if you're getting it a gift for somebody else, it can be something you can really dial in for them to make sure it's something that uh, um, that they're going to love, that they're going to want to uh, keep and cherish forever then. Um, most of the other components that we see here, you'll one other one this is our, our top cap basically puts it all together uh see the one piece of uh white plastic on the back this is known as styrene uh it's actually a really good product to use when you're dealing with lighting and diffusion because it helps both reflect and amplify light really good which is what helps make this product so bright it's the exact same material you'll see on the back of these uh panels here now, normally uh, in a process like this, it would be nicer to let me set, uh, let everyone uh, attach these themselves. Um, but the problem I run into is some, some of the artwork that we have out there, it gets really thin lines on the edges and uh, sometimes put the staples in if you're not careful will actually damage the artwork. So I decided to take care of that stage for you guys just to make sure we didn't run into that risk at all. Now, the rest of the components all these different rings that you see, these are all part of um, the base component. So this is what um, this is where the, the bread and butter of this product is that does most of the work. Um, this comes as a couple of different functions that came into mind as this has been developed over the years. Um, a, um, we ran into a big problem at first when you'd have a cable just coming out of the back end of a box on one panel, because then that artwork would always be away from being able to view. And so it made it really tough for people to enjoy the full full thing. So we had to kind of build a base that works to be able to basically swivel. So you can switch the artwork around and uh, what you're showing people. Uh, we also ran into a problem that uh, LEDs, like all electronics, eventually are going to burn out. Uh, and for the longest time, when they're integrated right inside, you'd have to take the whole thing apart, um, and which is why we ended up developing uh, this little insert component, which works with the, uh, the main base bottom like this. So in that way, you can actually just pull out two screws and be able to remove the one piece that will keep the LED on. So at least that way it's easy to replace in the future without having to tear the whole product apart. Um, the big reason for this is not that I, I have no problem ever um, honoring a lifetime warranty on these products and making sure that people are good to go with it. Um, but I don't like wasting money on shipping. and I don't like wasting your time either. Uh, so I designed it this way. So it's a lot easier for me to be able to just send you the parts uh, for you to be able to fix it yourself. Um, the reason why I push a lot for that with most of my products is I am a huge proponent for um, uh, the right to repair movement, um, something that's really irritating companies like Apple and the others like that, because I believe a product should be designed to last forever, not to last for a couple of years. And then you then you get it back. And uh, um, yeah, and then you got to deal with constant problems and upgrading and spending more money on it, like and not enjoying it as much as you should be able to. So. Kind of gives you an idea of the over bits here. Uh, the one differentiation I know that we'll have between our kits is um, I have this one bigger ring. This one's used on the inside uh, most part of it. You guys will find that you actually have two half rings or like just two partial rings instead of the full ring like this. Uh, the reason why I adopted the, uh, the, uh, the half ring model is because it just uses way less material then. So cutting a full ring like this is obviously going to use a lot more than just cutting the ha half moon discs that you guys see. Um, uh, thus making it a little bit cheaper to run the whole thing and making sure that I'm not wasting nearly as much material, um, which is a big thing when you come into uh, a laser cutting business and stuff like this is how are you nesting uh, stuff when you're doing it to make sure you're maximi uh, maximizing the uh, the usage of that material so that you're not having to throw away a whole lot of waste with it. Um, as that kind of uh, in my uh, we just got moved to a new workshop here but what we're working on developing right now is uh, actually a rocket stove that we can hook up to basically a power generation system so then this way whenever we have excess waste we can actually break it all down we can burn it for heat for the shop but also use it to turn into power so we can power the wood shop and the laser cutter and all the other tools that we have as well so let's see how do we want to start today so um 
the only tool we need for doing this whole thing, it's number one Robinson. It's usually the green handled square guy right here. I don't know if you guys see the tiny guy there. Um, and I built this thing to make sure it's super easy to put together like this. Um, other than just this one tool that'll use with the uh, about six screws that comes with it. Uh, the rest of it I've designed to basically work off of um, uh, it's a technique known as friction fitting, where you actually dial in the cuts so well that when you can push the product together, it actually sticks and holds itself all together without the need of fasteners, uh, which makes for just a much cleaner design when it's all done, uh, less material that has to go into it and a much easier process to put together. So um, the first step, um, I guess what we'll do is we've got, uh, this is uh, this little guy here usually comes with a cable here. Um, that's our Bluetooth disc. So this is our LED that runs with this. This guy does have an LED app, or sorry, a Bluetooth app that we will go over uh, once we get it all plugged in and on. And you'll notice that all of them come with the end as a, uh, a USB, just a regular USB end like this. Now, one thing about this product you'll notice is that it doesn't actually come with a power supply. And there's a reason for this. And you'll actually notice it with a lot of products nowadays uh, that they don't actually come with a power power bank supply or anything like that. Um, because when it actually comes to um, CSA approvals and like uh, like federal government levels for product development uh, is more often than not, if there's no power supply with it, it doesn't actually need CSA approval. That's where a lot of the concerns come from with products that might start a fire or do anything like that is in that power supply. And so that's why you'll see a lot of products don't actually include that um, because it actually it feeds, it, it meets the mandates of, uh, of a CSA approval basically then without having to go and get the spend the thousands of dollars that you would need to actually have it all tested properly to make sure that it fits all of their um, their dynamics. And that's why I also like to work with battery related products because again they don't require that. It's usually when you're plugging it into a wall that a lot of the concerns come up that they have to they have to watch for. So the cool thing about this, though, is uh, rather than just a plug-in that goes in the wall, which kind of links you to a wall all the time, is you can plug the USB into anything. So it can be into your standard wall jack that you have for your phones. Uh, you could use something like a little power supply like this guy that can run it. You can plug it into your computer. You can plug it into your car. Uh, so it just makes the product far more versatile that way. So we solved one problem with the CSA while opening up a whole bunch of new available options with, uh, with this product at the same time. So um, first thing we'll do, something nice and easy, is uh, we're going to take the LED here. Uh, you'll notice there's four holes in it. Um, we're going to want to take the um, uh, the brown guy here. I'm just realizing now that you guys, uh, you probably don't have all the engraving on yours like I have on mine, but it should still show. You'll see one side that has uh, the kind of holes drilled out a little bit versus the other side that it doesn't. All right. The reason why we have them drilled out like that is to countersink the screws so they fit in nice and easily. And then this product isn't scratching your tables and stuff like that when you're setting it down on there because the screws are sticking out. So what we're going to want to do is take uh, the back of that guy. The disc basically can just sit right on top of there. And we're going to take the two smallest screws that we have here. Uh, and we're going to just go straight through those holes, twist them into there, and just get them to line up with the uh, with the disc on the other side just to keep that disc um, nice and centered and then the cable coming down the long spot of it there. So let's do these guys one at a time here. And so, yeah, if you guys have any questions at any point in time, I do have the chat pulled up here. So feel free to text them into there if you're bumping into any problems or something's not working for you. And I can uh, be sure to answer them uh, accordingly for you. Just this way you can keep up with get left behind as we're uh, going through this build here. So let's start getting that guy to go. Oh, um, so with that, that's right, I just remember, uh, we're only going to go in just a little bit of the ways just to grab it, uh, just to grab the disc a bit, because what will happen is um, when we screw it all the way in, you'll see this piece that has these little extra tabs on it like this. It's meant to screw into that, so it'll hold the bottom all in. So our goal right now is just to get the uh, LED disc attached to it and hanging on so that uh, it's not going to go anywhere on us when we're trying to put it into the final product then. Perfect. So that piece is done. So uh, for the next part here, then um, we are going to piece together the bottom of this. Now, normally at home, I have a, a nice fancy jig that everything just slides onto. So it lines it all up perfectly so I can go through this process really quickly um, because of the fact that obviously when you're manufacturing, the faster you can do it with quality, uh, the better. It's going to cost you less that way. So um, when doing it this way, though, we're going to um, uh, start with the bottom piece, it's this brown one. Um, again, you'll see those countersunk holes. Those are the ones that we're going to be using. Um, and generally what we'll do is just go through these one one at a time, um, screwing them into the rest of the pieces. And kind of once we get the first one on, it makes it a lot easier to uh, to get all the other screws into it. Now, let's see if I can remember the order that we do these in. Okay, so 
first thing first, the brown one. Then you're going to have um, another one. Looks like this guy. He's the thinner material. You'll actually see there's a different thickness in the wood materials. It's the thinnest one that you'll have. That's the next one that we want to use. So what this guy is actually doing is uh, he's going to be creating um, some extra space uh, between uh, the bottom where we put, uh, put this guy in. Um, and then the next layer up, and that actually fits just with the width of the LED, just so it offsets it a bit, so it's not crushing that disc at all. So we'll just screw that guy in a little bit there. Um, and then obviously, as you're going, we're going to be keeping all the little slotted hole piece all facing the same side. That's going to be for where our cable goes into it then. So get that guy in a little bit. And then we are going to next take the piece that had the extra tabs on it. And so that's the one that's going to be uh, then screwed into it. Um, this one, I do believe we have to be conscious of which way it goes on, because uh, there could be an upside down way. If you actually look at where those tabs are right now, uh, you'll see if I flip it over, they're actually on the opposite sides then. Um, so the easiest way to tell which is the right direction is when you put it on there, is just compare it back to the uh, the brown piece that goes into the bottom with the two screws. And just make sure when you put that up against there, those screw holes line up. Um, if they don't, then obviously we got to flip it over and do it the other way. So I did mine the wrong one. Right. So it looks like we lost Brandon for a moment. Um, at this point, this is one of those moments of technical difficulty. Um, so if we can just take a moment, I'm going to get Brandon to log out and then log back in and hopefully we can um, take off from where we lost him. Okay. In the meantime, how many people do we have joining us today? Does everybody have their art, um, their light box kit with them? Is there anybody who needs to pick theirs up still? I don't know. Okay, got Brendan back, it looks like. I see Kyla, you have a question for us. No, not at this time. Sorry. Okay. Okay, so I had to switch over to my phone. Can you hear me again now? Yep, you're back on. Thanks, Brandon. Right. So I don't know if it's just uh, Wi-Fi issues that we're having here, but uh, I will, uh, I'll will i have to play with like two hands here, both with uh, my phone and uh, <laughs> and trying to build this, but we'll make it work on the list then. Okay. Uh, how far did we get before it got cut off there? Um. I'm going to have to put that out. It looks like you were just reaching up to the screen. And no. I wonder if I can get the group to, to put their hands up or mention where you might be yeah, let me just see comfortable see. with starting where he is at this moment. Moderators can jump in here and... Uh, Maybe allow the group to have a discussion. <laughs> um, yeah, this is going to be tough. To do. I'm going to try to actually um, jump back on with the um, computer version here again and see if we have any luck with that, just because it's going to be way easier to deal with the trend of okay. my phone. Uh, oh, no, we've got apparently no internet here right now. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> So the technical right, difficulties we were talking about. <laughs> yes, this is absolutely one of those difficulties, technical difficulties yeah. we've, uh, we're talking about. Right, um, let's try that. Okay, wow, look at that. Okay, we don't want that one. I've got two going on here now. Okay, we'll let that one go. Okay. Um. Ah! <laughs> oh no, I think we've lost him again. 
Mid squeal. Oh, there he is. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's just the yeah, I think it's the internet here at the place we're staying. Yeah. All Take right. the boys so, off the video games. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> well, Zach's, Zach's just doing yoga, so at least he's good. Uh, so um, I'll just get, I'll just get, jump back to where we're at with uh, the main, the main electronics piece here then, uh, just to make sure we keep up for everyone uh, um, so they know where we're at. Um, so basically, uh, the three pieces we are getting to right now, so uh, your bottom brown dark one with the uh, uh, inset holes here is where we're going to start putting a screw through for that guy. Uh, next is the super thin wood. Um, basically what this does is it helps to create a buffer space for our LEDs when we actually put it in there so it doesn't rub up against any of the other layers that are uh, that are in it. So I'll put that guy up and make sure obviously as we do each of these, we're lining up the uh, this space here. So that's basically the channel that the LED is gonna go through afterwards. So I'll screw that guy in a little bit there. Uh, third one uh, is the one with the little tiny tabs on it here now. Now what we're going to want to do is when we put that one on, we're going to take a quick look, just put it on the top there. But then we're going to look at putting the uh, the LED one with it's only got the two holes in it with the two screws on it back there, um, face up on the bottom. So we can line up and see if those screw holes from there are lining up on this side. Um, in my case, it's not. So I actually have to flip this piece over just to make sure that those screws, when they come up, they'll go into those little tabs there. We want to make sure we check this now because we put the whole thing together and piece it all together. It's really a pain because then you have to pull it all back apart to switch this one over then. Uh, so that's how we just do our check for that uh, beforehand. So now we'll just put that screw in a little bit more so it'll hold together. And hopefully our internet will hold together for us here. <laughs> all right. So that guy's there now. Um, then the fourth one that we're going to go on, it's the, this... Um, it's the thinnest ring. I guess it's probably the only one you guys have got left. I have the two here, like I was saying before, um, but you guys probably shouldn't have the bigger one like this because you should have what look like little two little sea crescent moons instead then. Uh, and we've done that because that uses way less material than this does. So um, you're going to want to take the, I guess, the ring that you have left, the thin guy. What this guy does when he goes on there is um, you'll see the actual uh, light box box square like this. When it goes on, it slides right over top of that. And so what that does is it allows it to be able to swivel then basically around that ring. So we'll put that ring on next. Put, screw him in a little bit. And so once that guy's on, that'll allow us to put um, uh, this piece over. Now, as you can see with mine, I've actually put a QR code on some of these. And this is uh, what I try to do with the product as much as I can now. That's a link to things like the app and how to use it and everything like that. Um, I didn't have a chance to get all, all into the kits, but I can get you guys linked up with the same link for that uh, uh, later on here. So uh, what I'll usually do is you'll see that the wood's got uh, one nicer grain side versus the other side. Um, you, this is an oak that we use here. So you can see the grain's really nice on the one side. Usually what I'll do is I'll put that that grain face down because then you'll actually see the bottom of the light box whereas this side it's all inside of it so you won't see what's going on with it at all so once we've done that uh in my case i will take the one big ring at the end and put it onto here and screw that one down to it uh, but you guys will have the two little c-shaped ones and so you'll just basically just put one point on screw that one in and then slide the second point over to the nearby spot and screw it in through there and you'll just have the two pieces that hold everything together from the inside now when putting this part together, uh, you want to make sure everything's screwed in nice and snug. Um, but if you go too tight with it, it'll affect its ability to actually have it swivel then. So usually what I'll do is I'll put all the screws in and then I'll loose them off a little bit just to get that um, swivel effect that I want in a way that doesn't feel like it's resisting too much then. Uh, we used to go with uh, like Lazy Susan's little metal guys with bearings for this, but like it just became, uh, it's a product that you have to get from China. So you're shipping it all the time. It's metal, so it's expensive. Uh, so it's that's kind of why we moved away from all of that. Um, and so now, once you get that, you can basically just keep lining up the pieces and then put the other screws into it and get them all screwed through. Okay, Brendan, while you're taking that moment, let's yeah. ask how everybody's doing and if there's anybody else who, if everybody's made it to this point, I'd like to hear back from the group totally. here, see if anybody has any questions or any issues, any issues making it to this point. And I believe you are able to respond back. Yeah. Uh, My screwdriver is being a little annoying. I'm still back there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Anybody else? Or have you made it to this point? Are you waiting until the... Um, oh, Prisha didn't... Did Prisha not pick up the kit from... Heritage Village. Mm 
Okay. So Prisha, that's okay. What we're gonna do is this is a recorded session. So after this session, we'll edit out our technical difficulties maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll be able to follow along with Brandon anytime. So even though you've registered for the session, if you haven't picked up your kits yet, they are available at Heritage Village. Okay, and so you can pick up that kit and then follow along with Brandon um, at your own leisure. <laughs> In the meantime, isn't it nice to be part of a live session so you can still ask him questions Absolutely. about his artwork or about his process, uh, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Is there any other questions that I can, anybody else interested or have any questions for Brandon? Uh, what way did you say it's supposed to face the, the bottom part with the LED light? Yeah, so you're talking, um, uh, are you talking just this specific wood, piece of wood, which way should it face? Um, yeah, with the nails that you. Saw. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, with this one, um, obviously, any of the uh, the darker brown ones like this, you'll you'll see that there's actually the countersunk holes with like a little bit of extra cutout. Those are always going to be facing down. That's where your screw is going up and in. Um, when with this piece, um, when it actually goes into the bottom, um, I've actually got it all screwed in here already. But you're going to be looking for the piece that's got these little tabs, and that that piece with the tabs is the one that you're going to have to be conscious of which way it's flipping, because when I take um, take this guy and I'm going to flip him around and put him into here. You want to make sure that those screw holes, like in the case of me, the one screw comes here, it comes up and it'll go through that tab. Um, if it doesn't line up, it's going to be opposite of that. And that just means you need to flip the uh, the one ring with the tabs on it uh, 180 degrees over and put it on the other direction then. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Okay. Any other questions? think we're good. All right, for now anyway, we'll see. All right, so with that on, now I've kind of put all the screws into it. And as you can see with mine, it's got this nice swivel effect to it. So I kind of got them all to a good tightness so that that can move really easily. Um, I do feel on the one side here, it's got a little bit of, like it jiggles a bit, which I don't like. So I'll just tighten it a little bit to help deal with the jiggle. Um, you'll actually find that often you're not swiveling it around anyway, but it's just kind of nice when you're having four different pieces of artwork to change what you're what you have featured basically because i find a lot of the times these get put into corners and stuff like that or onto end tables and whatnot and so uh it's nice to just kind of change which artwork you're presenting forwards then all right so now that we've got that done we can take our led now uh, and this piece should basically just slip right into there and line up with the little holes it's got in the bottom here. Um, some that, that one slipped in really nicely for me, which I'm super grateful for. Um, sometimes as I've switched to different cables, they'll, uh, the cables will connect, like they'll um, catch a little bit here. So you kind of have to jiggle it around and push it in a little bit. Um, don't be afraid to use a little bit of force if you need to. Um, I feel like this one was probably easier because I took it apart first from a finished light box and then rebuilt it. So naturally it should probably work properly. Um, and then once that's there, it's just those two little screws. You just finish screwing those ones in all the way and that'll hold all of our LED in there nice and easily. So this is great, like I was saying earlier, is if, uh, you know, eventually in, you know, 10 years when this bulb burns out, uh, we can uh, just pop that little piece off, change the bulb out, put it right back in. No taking the whole thing apart, keeping it nice and easy that way. Um, is there anybody who wants to share their screen and show us where they're at? <laughs> totally. To know who is following along with this. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yay. Yeah, looks Thank like you. is that lining up for your screws then to the other side? I feel like I might have missed something. I that's, have this round thing. And uh, I, yeah, OK, and then you're no, you're right there. So that's the next guy that's actually going to go on. So um, oh. yeah, yeah, so that's uh, what will happen is that ring is basically the one that this will swivel around. So if you see the big uh, square one that you have there, yeah, the, the one, that one, you can put that guy on around that ring. This no, ring. No, leave, yeah, leave that ring on there. It's all good. You can put that one on there. And now you see the the square, the, put the square over top of that and around that ring now, because that ring fits down inside here, right? There oh. you go. Yeah. And then do you see the little C shapes that you have then? Uh, no, they're, they're the extra bits that you have there. Yeah, so those are basically, I have a big ring here for mine for the whole thing, but yours will do the exact same thing. I just use those rings because they use less material, and so it saves on wood. Uh, and so what'll happen is the screws will go through all the layers and then screw right into those, and that holds this whole thing together like that for you then. 
Perfect. So you've got the right idea out of it. <laughs> I love your shirt, Steph. Your sweater. <laughs> Thank you. When I stopped at Heritage Village, I just couldn't resist. <laughs> <laughs> Very <Awesome>. good. <laughs> So I guess for Prisha, we could probably just organize shipping a shipping um, a package out to her because she's out in Ontario that she registered from there, right? Eh? Oh, does she register from Ontario? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, though. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Yeah, we, can, we can definitely get a kit sent out there. I'm sure, though. <laughs> we can definitely get that out to you. Yeah. Awesome. So it looks like Steph's getting there then. So I wonder where um, how everyone else is doing then. <clears throat> so funny Prisha because I almost I mentioned um to Deanna that um I'm like oh well just drive the kid over to her to later tonight if she didn't get a chance to pick it up ah. and <laughs> just a quick jaunt <laughs> I'll see you in a week <laughs> yeah <laughs> I thought uh, so make sure you put the uh, the square base piece on before you screw that uh, that last tab in. You got to have, yeah, there you go, yeah. There you go, yeah, that's good. I can't hear you. Do I have to put this part on first? Not yet, no, you can put that one on last. So the okay. whole idea with that piece was that you should be able to interchange it with a completed light box so you can switch out the bulb if it ever burns out. Okay. So yeah, so you got that piece like that. Yep. And then now keep your screws going all the way through so you can get them to pop up the other side a little bit and then put the little, uh, little, yeah, keep screwing those guys through. Yeah, usually it's best to go to get it to just pop out a little bit from the other side. And then once you do, then use the little C rings. They're not really C rings. I guess they're like little crescent shapes. Yeah, you got it. So once you get it to pop through just a little bit, now grab the crescent, that crescent shape. And you can put it like over those little holes. It's like they'll put them over the screws. Yeah, there you go. And that one. And then finish going through and hold, uh, tighten it down so that guy holds everything together then. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, sorry, what number of screwdriver did you say? Because this isn't working. <laughs> it's the number one Robinson. Okay, thank you. Uh-uh. There you go. Looks like that's coming together for you. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. So while this is happening, I have a question for you, Brendan. Yep. What is your favorite fruit? My favorite fruit? Or vegetable. <laughs> um, fruit is probably going to be either, if you can find them, uh, man like the proper ripe one, mango is my number one. But it's tough to get just the right level of mango. Otherwise, it's pineapple, hands down. Oh, nice. Yeah. Good choices. As yeah. for vegetable, um, I'm gonna have to say mushrooms, just because, and they're not really a vegetable though. So they're technically yeah, they're exactly. fungus, but like I'm gonna throw it in that one anyway, uh, just because of how versatile they are. It's yeah. just such a good cooking thing, snack type thing goes on every. Yeah, um, of course with onions, mushrooms and onions go on everything. <laughs> like, yes, I am right on board with those. <laughs> <laughs> what about yeah. you, Steph? I see you working away. <laughs> Uh, definitely like a bell pepper would be my mm -hmm. favorite. Apple. Very good. And a mandarin orange at Christmas. Oh, yeah. The best fruit. That's my favorite fruit. Yes, I just got asked that last week and I was like, yep, mandarin is my favorite. Or, yep. yeah, or a clementine. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I really love mandarins for just being able to create art with the peel all the time if you're just smart about how you peel them. <laughs> 
It's true. Always creating. Anybody yeah. else want to type in the chat their favorite fruit or vegetable? Super interested to know if maybe there's one that I've never heard of before. Mm -hmm. Ooh, strawberry. Yes. Big fan. Yes. Very, very good. Mm. Also, one of my son's favorite, too. That and blueberries. <laughs> okay. No broccoli? Come on. <laughs> I actually really like broccoli big fan of broccoli broccoli and cauliflower are two of my broccoli cauliflower and carrots are like my favorite snacky healthy crunchy. snacky food crunchy yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. exactly there you go is that piece all sliding in there like it should yeah there you go looks like you got it there yeah Yay. yeah perfect yeah Fun. you can undo the cable tie there too if you need to get it out of your way no, no, not that. I'm not no. Leave that plugged in. You're gonna want to undo the. the you can undo the actual like cable to ah. Uh, yeah. What do what they call again? I forget what they're called. Twist the little ties. twist ties. Yeah. There we go. You can get rid of that. So you can get the cable out of your way then at least. <laughs> Very nice. There you go. Yeah. And push. There you go. Success. We're winning. Dragon fruit. Yeah. Oh, we have somebody with a dragon fruit favorite. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, pineapple on pizza. What are your That's thoughts right. on that? That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Hard no. <laughs> I love it. I do. That's sweet and savory. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. My favorite is that meme that goes around that it's just got like uh, pizzas on a big pineapple slab. It's way better. I like pizza on my pineapple. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> awesome. Right. Looks like we're almost successfully got that bit all done now. Mm -hmm. I guess now I know what to get Yay. you for. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> there you go. All right. So that's the main base I'll put together for you now. So let's get this move back down a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. So with this next stage, um, now we get to actually put the four panels together. Now, if you'll notice on all the panels here, I'm going to grab just the one. Uh, there's the bottom of uh, the one bottom right corner. It's going to have the tiny tab like this versus everything else is always like twice the size of that. Um, this I did because I ended up putting too many panels on upside down all the time because there's no way to tell one way from the other. So this piece is always going to go towards the bottom right. Um, and so you'll see that with each next piece, it'll actually just tuck. It'll all slide in nicely like that and have that kind of little point at the bottom there. Now, for this part, you can basically, we want to just create a box, obviously, um, out of these pieces and um, clip them all together. Uh, now, the cool thing is you can obviously put them in whatever order that you like um, and get them all to just, come on, go together. There we go. To sit together like, like so. Now, uh, this next stage, um, it's actually, if you guys have it available, I would say grab an elastic band um, or something that you can put around the whole thing to just help hold it together because uh, it'll fall apart on you sometimes when we're trying to put the top and bottom on, um, at least until we get the one, uh, one piece onto it then. So uh, this is the tricky part. Do, do you guys need, I'll give you guys a moment if you want to grab an elastic band or any kind of string or a ribbon or something like that that you want to tie around it just because it's going to make your life a lot easier to, uh, to put it together. I've done enough of these that I don't need it. Um, and I'm going to see if I can lift my camera up here a bit to. Hello, Ashley. Welcome. I see your hand up. Hi, I have a question. Yep. Yeah, I have a question because I wasn't able to pick up my kit today. I didn't get the information as to where pickup was. Um, so will this be recorded? It is. To do yes. the there? Okay. Yeah. But feel free to jump in and ask questions um, while it's happening. So at least you can see the process. Mm -hmm. okay, sounds good. The master. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining us. There we go. That's a good. That's a good camera shot to show this next stage.
Oh, are those, are they aligned? I think you might have the one upside. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> exactly that. That's what I do all the time. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, and let's get the last piece on there. Yeah, this is much nicer to walk through when I have somebody else to see where they're at because I just I'm done it so many times that it takes me no time at all, and I definitely don't know how long it takes other people to do it. Awesome! Look at that. Did you have an elastic band for it then too? Perfect. Yeah. Yep. You got it. There you go. So um, now for this next stage here, what we're going to want to do is we'll keep the bottom put off to the side. It's easier to put that on last. We're going to start with the top piece instead. Um, let's pull this guy back here. Um, so with this, uh, it's really difficult to just put it on the top and have it immediately line up with all of the holes. Um, so we never want to try to put it on that way because you're just going to be pounding at it and it's just going to become a real headache. Now, I'm going to try to work at this backwards from you guys because I have to with the camera here, but you can work from like your perspective moving forward. But generally what you want to do is take um, the corner. So you see like, um, so look at the, I guess I guess I'd put it this way. On the light box, you'll see these two closest um, pins that'll basically go through uh, through the top right there, right? So what we want to do is actually keep this whole thing, rather than going on flat like this, we kind of want to go on at an angle like this and try to get those first two to go through the hole first. And then we're going to just start tapping it down as we work our way around the whole light box to put it into there. Um, it just works easier that way because once you've got the two, all the rest kind of fall into place and it's easier to adjust the sides of the light box. So let's see if I can get this to go there first. So we're going to go and of course, I don't have an elastic band, so I get a fight with it, doing it the, the harder way. Um, and I get to work at it backwards. So let's see if I can just get those guys first to let's steal this for a second, pull that up there. All right. Let's see if I can actually do this properly now. All right. So there. So what I've done is I've got just those two just slightly put in like that. And then as you can see, the rest of the light box is oh, it's falling apart. Uh, but those pieces aren't in quite yet um, because once I've got the those two in, it's going to be a lot easier to work around the light box and push the rest in. And as you can see already, this is why it's a lot easier to use a um, elastic band around it when we're doing this stage of things. Um, and so once you've got the two, if you've got the rest holding, you can actually just lightly tap it um, either way and slowly work your way around it. If you're finding that one piece isn't tapping down, just look to make sure you can push it in uh, some to make sure it actually um, gets lined up properly so you can keep pushing it down all the way. Uh, and then just slowly work your way around, you know, take your time with it just to make sure it all fits down nice and tight then. Um, and you should be able to get it all squeezed onto there then so everything is nice and even then. How's that working for you? Keep working on it. It looks like you're getting them to go down there. So and don't be afraid to like tap it a little bit too. It definitely does help. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's looking like it's squeezing on there nice and tight now for you. <laughs> Is that working out for you there, Steph? Uh, yeah, mostly. I'm almost almost not one last side here. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. And if you have to, like I said, just maybe you might have to like push the wood in on the side just to make sure the top will, top will slide down. Um, or you can usually just look through the top and see whether or not the uh, tabs are lining up and which way you kind of need to move that panel a little bit. Uh, wood's a bit finicky sometimes. It'll come with warp in it, so it does make it a little bit difficult to line those up perfectly all the time because it's not perfectly straight. So it does take a little bit of finicking to get it to, to grab properly and slide down under there sometimes. All right, I'm going to turn my microphone off so you don't hear me pound. No worries. <laughs> going to pop up here. Ashley, do you have another question for us or is this um, a leftover hand up from previous one? Sorry, uh, I, my hand was still up. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Thanks for that. Thanks for checking. You bet. Awesome. I think you're looking pretty good there, Steph. 
<laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, and we'll be able to tighten it all up a little bit more with the last stage of what we're going to do with this. So that's on now. So let's flip it over, put it upside down now so we can do the same thing, but with the bottom now. And so we're going to do that exact same process using the other side. Now we're going to work from one corner, put it on and work our way around it. Um, now with this one, what I do find is when I put it on, it's easy to kind of work it all the way around. But what I've always found it works really good is if I actually take the whole thing, I'll place the top against my chest so that I can use that as leverage to basically pull uh, that whole piece on slowly. And I'll just move my way around it while I can line it up and pull it tightly against myself. So that way you basically create a squishing motion between your chest and the bottom of that till you slide it all on. Um, and there we go. So now that's slide all on there like that. And so when I do this quickly in the workshop, I definitely have uh, like rubber mallets and stuff like that. That goes through this whole process a lot faster. But I do find that for when other people are building, using this technique gives you a lot more control because you have three points of contact. It's like a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> Health and safety. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, same thing. You want to start with the one corner and get it like on there first and then slowly work your way around the rest of the uh, rest of the base there. Oh, yeah, it looks like you're winning. I love the um, ignite logo sign on the one side of the of the light box. Good. I'm glad you like how that turned out. That was a yeah. last minute design and get these things all hacked together. <laughs> it's perfect. Thank you. So yeah, you're at that spot now with it, uh, Steph, where uh, if you wanted to use the chest technique, you can be able to pull it, uh, pull that bottom tight into you to be able to close that up that last little bit. So you're not having to hit it because it's a little bit more awkward to hit the bottom here with the rings on it. So. <laughs> And the light box, it spins? Yeah, so now when you hold the bottom, because of that spinning layer, the whole thing will be able to turn now. Amazing. It's so funny how often at trade shows I have people like, oh, what button makes it turn? It's like, guys, <laughs> <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I can do that, you know. Yeah, you could, if you want to pay the extra for it. Exactly. <laughs> We're going to keep things simple for now, though. <laughs> Minimum viable product. <laughs> Wow. Are these quite a popular item during trade shows? Uh, yeah, especially the comic expos because the superhero stuff all over them. So they do become pretty popular like that. I actually have a few other um, wholesalers who will wholesale these just for the purpose of taking a trade shows that get their own custom artwork made for it. So uh, it's another thing I do is I work with other uh, artists who do their own artwork and we can just put their artwork on this product. So now they have an additional product to add to their artwork line then, right? I love that. Oh, Kyla. <laughs> we are going to for who's this one that we got here now uh kyla kyla we're gonna yeah. want to have to we're gonna want to build the rest of your base there first before you attach it onto there um so yeah you're gonna yeah i'll uh i can pull mine apart here to show you we're running into screwdriver problems so we'll get the rest of the screws in gotcha gotcha okay yeah you're running into the screwdriver issue then okay um yeah, so you're going to want to make sure that uh, that it's, it's all going to need to go together first before you can put this last stage together. Um, oh. Only because this piece on the inside, it's hard. You won't be able to hold it in place while you're putting the screws into it when the rest of this is attached onto it. Right. So, so you're going to want to take ones. They'll just fit on top of that. Yeah, no. So what'll happen is uh, so from there, let's go. Let's put your uh, put the box. Sorry, let's put the box piece over that first. So leave that. Yeah, grab that one right there. Put that over top of that ring there. No other side. It'll slide right there you go. And then what you'll do is use those little seat bits after that, and that helps to hold the square piece oh, to the rest of it then. I see. See how that works? Perfect. So then, yeah, once you've got that all screwed together, then this piece can basically be able to mount to the uh, mount to the rest of it then. Very cool. This is very neat. I was trying to get my, my oldest son to build it, but then you're driving. <laughs> <laughs> It's very cool. Can't wait to see it lit up. We're almost there. You'll be able to get through the light up process of it and uh, figure out the app yeah. and everything like that still while we're going through this little class here. No worries. We're just not at, not at home. We didn't bring the proper stuff with us. So no worries. No worries. That last little piece is just giving you a headache there, eh, Steph? Yeah, 
it's very much um doesn't like me right now i think um so <laughs> i do yeah in a case like this sometimes sometimes you just need to use a little bit of force so i'll like just put it onto the table and actually like give it a little bit of a snack sometimes because like it's it does get finicky with it sometimes so um can you uh can you put up the side kind of that dolphin panel let me see the side of it i just want to see flip it right to the dolphin panel let me see the bottom corners as much as you can where it's going in so tip it uh, head towards me a bit uh, a little bit more a little bit more and Okay, so what's happening with yours right now is do you see how those middle two pins are back a bit from the hole? So what's happening is that uh, the bow is bowing um, basically inwards. So it's harder, it's not lining up properly. So what I would do in that case is actually just grab the sides of the panel like this and see if you can actually just pull it out away from the box a little bit and pull it out. So then that way you can try to line those middle ones up. Yeah, there uh, you go. You see what I'm saying for that? And then once it, it'll, it'll all snug itself back together, but it's just so we can get it through those holes there first. Okay. Yeah, that's the other fun thing we run into when we store this stuff over a period of time is sometimes things warp a little bit without, uh, without us knowing. <laughs> All right, for the most part, it's all, it's going, did they start, it started going in at least, right? Yeah, yeah, there you go. You've already got it started going in. So now sometimes you just, this is especially where it works really good to just put it against your chest and you can pull it really tight to slide it down that rest of that way. That, that worked. Oh, there we go. That's the sound I wanted to hear. <laughs> there you go. Is that all tightening up for you now? Yeah, that's perfect. Perfect. And there you go. Yay! You built a light box. Um, so from this stage now, uh, what we want to do is, uh, if uh, <laughs> if um, if you have a like a, um, sorry uh, a power block for like your phone, uh, either a, a laptop that you can plug the USB into or a battery bank, that's what we're going to want to do next. Uh, I have a battery bank here that I'll be using for mine. Um, plug that guy in, and it lights up. Mine's being obnoxious and flashy right now, and I'll show you how we can fix that real quick here. So I'll give you a second to get any kind of power thing figured out. I'm just going to grab a quick glass of water while I let you guys grab power for yourself, and then we'll get you on to lighten it up. This is fun. Yeah, do you have different settings or does it always? Oh yeah, it definitely has different settings. This is the really annoying setting that the bulbs come in with factory default. So that's why I usually will go through these things and reset the first mode because I don't know, personally, when I get a product, this is not what I want to experience when I first plug it in. <laughs> Rather a nice fade of colors, something a little bit more appealing, but you know, you got limitations of suppliers that you got to deal with as a manufacturer sometimes. So <laughs> awesome. Did you get yourself some power up there then? Perfect. All right, you've already got a color set for yours. Yours just, oh, no, yours is still in the slow flash. flash. So what we're going to want to do next, uh, it's the same app that we use for either um, um, uh, Android or Apple. So go to your um, go to your app store. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Um, what is mine again anyway? I am Google Play. Got a shortcut to this right. There we go. The Play Store. There we go. Um, and the app we're looking for here, I'm going to actually just type it into here so you guys can all see how it kind of looks. Uh, LED, DLE. That is what you're going to want to search for. Uh, LED, DLE, and that. And you will be looking for, oh man, it's so tiny there. Let's see if I can scan that. So here is the app. It's probably all backwards, but you can see the little, uh, uh, it's got this little 
pair of hands with a little light and then like a yeah. rainbow color around it. Uh, look for the icon. That's the one you're going to want to download for it. Actually, it should look like this once you get it opened up. Sorry, can you, can you type in again? I have L E D D L E. B, B L E, like Bob, like B L E as in Bluetooth. Oh, thanks. Can find it there. I think so. Yeah, with us, oh. like two hands and a sun. You got it. Yeah. Oh yeah, there we go. Thanks, Teresa. <laughs> you bet. There's a link for it in the chat. <laughs> All right. Did you get yourself in there, Steph? Did you, did you get it opened up? Yeah. All right, so when you first open this up, um, it's got a couple of different sections. Um, sometimes it's going to automatically connect to your device. Sometimes it won't. Uh, it's different between different devices. Um, on the top left corner, you're going to see uh, three little lines there. If you click on that, it'll actually open up and show you all the Bluetooth um, devices available. Uh, this app doesn't... Um, Oops, most Bluetooth stuff will have you go through your Bluetooth settings in the phone to actually set it up. You don't do that with this one. You actually do it all through the app itself. So it'll either auto connect or you just got to go through there and just click on the one that you want to control. Um, I just usually I'll just hit all devices so you can control any and all that you have in the area. Um, and then you got your standard color ring then. Um, so you can actually pick any color you want. I'll actually move out of the way here so you can see on mine uh, here. So I'm going either uh, like a red here or green over here. Um, and so there's your you got millions of different color choices you can do through there um, on the bottom you'll notice that there's actually some extra storing spots so you can actually pick a color and store it down there that's your favorite um, up top here we've got both the, the ring that you can go through uh, ct is more of a like a, a white like a um, bright and warm white i really wish this camera didn't blow it out as much so you guys could see it so that's doing more like yellows and whites and stuff like that um, most people usually just stick with the colors on these things um, and then the last one's a, like a dimmer thing for it again not something that most people use what most people end up finding that they're doing is down here under mode uh, is where I always find my favorite one. It'll give you all kinds of different like uh, patterned modes that it'll go through. Um, what we're seeing when we first put it, it's called, called tricolor jump. That's just jumping between different colors like that. That's really obnoxious. Usually what I'll do is I'll go down till I find the one that says seven color gradient. And what that'll do is it's got this nice blend from one color to another that it goes through then. Were you able to find that there, Steph? Yeah, okay. Um, and so uh, obviously you'll be able to explore through there. There's all kinds of different patterns and stuff like that. For myself, I always find I'll just throw on the seven color gradient and leave it go. Uh, but you'll also notice at the bottom you'll have uh, both um, a speed uh, a speed setting as well as a brightness setting. Uh, brightness tends to only work with like one color, uh, where speed is working with any time you have a pattern that it's moving through then. Um, and so that kind of takes you through that component of it. And then lastly, you've got both, uh, there's like this, custom, there's a custom tab. So you can choose all your own custom colors. You can have them do different gradients and flash between each other and nerd out on that all you want. I haven't personally gotten too much into playing with it, but it's definitely there. I've had some friends that have done a lot with it, uh, as well as uh, you can actually have it set up. There's a, a music tab too. So you can either pick a song that you like and just play your song through the app uh, out the headphones or whatever, and then the light will react to it. Um, or there's also an option like uh, music or record up top here. Um, and record will actually just use the mic on the phone then to control uh, control what it's doing. Is this actually working for me right now? Are you doing things? Yeah, there we go. It's doing changing stuff with the colors then. So, so yeah, you got voice activated, music activated as well with it then. And so I'm going to switch mine back to my seven color gradient because that's just my go to all the time. Um, where is it here? There we go. Seven color gradient. There we go. And now um, with these guys as well, too, if you really want to get into it on the top right, it's got some other settings. Uh, you can actually set a timer onto it as well. So you can have a certain time of day that you want it to turn on, certain time of day you want it to turn off. So that way you don't leave it on all the time. Um, I find it's really nice because um, for myself, one of the key places I put mine all the time is in my bathroom. 
uh, because there's nothing I dislike more than waking up in the middle of the night and having to navigate that bright white light. (laughs) So it's nice to walk into the bathroom, be able to see what you need to see to go to the bathroom while still not waking yourself up because you want to go right back to bed again afterwards. So it's nice to make sure that it's turned on for those times all the time. Um, Again, these are using an LED bulb, so your power consumption is absolutely minimal um, with these things. Um, So you can just leave them on all the time. Most of mine, I just leave them on all the time. Uh, It's great, great ambience to any room that I have it in. Um, And it's just easier than having to deal with um, having to deal turning it on and off all the time and dealing with it so so there's that we have a light box built and you guys know how to control it and do cool stuff with it now we did it congratulations you guys did anyone run run into any problems anyone have any other questions to to get themselves finished through theirs you just need to unmute yourselves and have at her <laughs> You're welcome, Haley. I feel like we have a bunch of light boxes built then. <laughs> yes, so. Yes. <laughs> there you go. It looks great. Well done, staff. Thanks. <laughs> That's awesome. Is there anybody else who maybe, well, maybe some of us will be taking some of the recorded sessions and trying it at home. Um, I think there is a couple of people who need to pick up light boxes after this recorded session, and we can certainly help that out. Just reach out to Participate with Buffalo, and they can help get a light box to you if you don't have one in hand. Um, And then other than that, I mean, Brandon is in town for the week. Um, So let me know, um, you know, connect back with us if you'd like to meet with him personally we can maybe set something like that social distancing um and if he's available of course it is his birthday he'll be celebrating it sometime this week so two more days two more days wish brandon happy birthday (laughs) yay we're all going to be getting um pizza on a pineapple for you Mm -hmm. yes pizza (laughs) on pineapple (laughs) <laughs> awesome <laughs> all right and i want to say thank you for everybody for joining us today thank you for brandon for leading our very first artist spotlight session yay, yay that's so <laughs> great you did a fabulous job congratulations to everybody who has their light boxes i hope you use them um yeah and don't forget to check out the additional artist sessions that spotlight sessions that'll be happening um, you can find more about them at rmwv.ca slash ignite. And again, uh, ignite is on display until October 10th at 930. And then Brandon will be quickly coming to take his piece down. So <laughs> you want to go and check it out, please. All right. Thank you all for joining us. And uh, and we'll log out now. Have a great day. I'll Thank see you, you everyone. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. <laughs>